I am Alfred Mbayo, and uh, I am the Chief Executive Officer and the co-founder of Leotech, Sierra Leone Limited. It's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, I have Chief Sir Alfred. He's a chief and a sir. Oh, he was knighted and has his chieftaincy. Uh, but he has a very interesting company uh, with um, Leo Tech in Sierra Leone. He is the founder. He is the president, the honorable, all those you know heavy titles that you can give a young man. Um, and he's going to give us the game. So whether you're listening on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or our latest partner, African Young Voices Radio, AYV Radio. We thank Chief Navo Jr. for connecting us and allowing us to tell our fellow Sierra Leoneans what's going on in their country and abroad. But Alfred, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Um, thank you so much. I'm doing well, and I hope you're doing well too. Always blessed by the best. I, I just have to get into it because I've had some great interviews from Sierra Leone of people who are outside the box doing things that people are like, what is that? You do something that's not even necessarily so like sexy in today's Instagrammable world where everything has to be flash and shine, but you are a true like engineer, a real like scientist and you deal with different scientists and engineers. So I, I, I want to know why did you create this organization and how is it going to benefit Sierra Leone? Thank you so much, Caleb. Well, to start off with, I think Leo Tech was born out of the need to solve Sierra Leone's problem using our own local content approach. Um, Sierra Leone is a great nation, of course, but I have a few statistics just to give you. It has been published recently that Sierra Leone has a 57% poverty rate. And that means we are at position 184th position out of 189 countries surveyed by UNDP on the Human Development Index. Out of our 8.2 million population here in Sierra Leone recently, 60% of that population is below the age of 25 years, youth. And the same Human Development Index estimates that 70% of our youths here in Sierra Leone are unemployed or underemployed, or they do not have that job security. Some of the reasons they stated in the, in the, in the report was that the youths have some lack of um, marketable skills, then we have some high amount of illiteracy. And then some youths are not that kind of entrepreneurial driven. And then we have less private sector job creation here in Sierra Leone. So at the end of the day, our youth also, if you look at the picture, we, we, have, we have been showing less interest in technology. Cozilla skill level report recently shows that uh, Sierra Leonean youth or the whole of Sierra Leone Skill level in Sierra Leone in terms of technology is just 2%. And we have, of course, 4% in data science. These are scary statistics. These are the, the, the technology. I mean, these are the, the careers that are actually earning fortunes to youths out there. When you come to Sierra Leone, it's a different story. You look at what our curriculum, I mean, what our, our tertiary institutions are doing. They are doing a great job just to try to stabilize youth um, in some kind of unemployment among the youth. But there is a huge curriculum gap from what the, 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 the tertiary institutions are offering as compared to what the job market is requiring and also what 
what is required in the entrepreneurship world. So this is a scary statistics and facts. So as a young uh, upcoming engineer, of course, um, I am soon to be an engineer, I'll be graduating soon. Whilst we are yet students uh, back in 2020, we had this outbreak of coronavirus. So we, we, we saw the need to complement government's efforts in fighting the disease. So I mobilized eight students and we invented the first locally made mechanical ventilator here in Sierra Leone. And after that invention, I tell you, Caleb, we saw the anticipation in, in youths trying to understand how we came up with that particular invention. What are the skills we exhibited in just coming up with that invention? What, what is so special about us that we could come up with something good out of Sierra Leone when everybody's expecting that nothing good comes out of the country? So out of this need, we told ourselves, it, it would be wise if we could have a platform or a kind of a company or an establishment that could facilitate the transfer of these skills from one Sierra Leonean youth to the other so that we all kind of capacitate ourselves, we build the, 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 the human capacity that is required to kind of fight youth and unemployment in Sierra Leone. So that was exactly what brought us to the establishment of the Leo Tech company. And sometimes I really refuse calling it a company. I, I prefer calling it a social enterprise because here we focus more on impact than profit. Well, I, I love that what you're doing. And I, and I definitely want to off air even um, talk more in detail about, you know, your 2022 plans and beyond what you said, you know, as a JC and a, you know, a, a double sim uh, a citizen, I, I, I heard a lot of people from Sierra Leone, you know, people I thought were talented, gifted, but I said, you're not showing your gifts online. You're showing everything else on Instagram about except what you do. Even if you're a taxi driver, that there, you can't find any taxi cab drivers before coming to Sierra Leone. It's everything's word of mouth where we have this thing called technology and people in Freetown are using it every day, but they're not necessarily using it for their business. So one per, uh, not one person, but a few people told me, well, here in Sierra Leone, we're not really business minded, which I said, you need to repent. How can you be a believer of it, whatever, any, anything and say, we're not business minded people. So you expect other people to build something for you. No, no, no. That's not how it's going to work. Um, we're, you're going to have to be a believer. I want to know as an engineer, you are somebody who I like to jokingly say, I like to break the game just to build it back so it suits my needs. As an engineer, how do you get people's mindset to think differently where they tell you, Alfred, I'm not this, or I, how can I know anything about technology? I'm from the village and, and, and what do I know? I didn't even finish proper school, but you have real school that's giving them practical skills. So what are things that you're able to do to make people themselves more? Well, first of all, we try to tell people that the formal approach to education is not all. Uh, there is a lot more to education than that of the formal approach. Um, yeah, our, our institutions are doing great here in Sierra Leone in trying to kind of go through the formal approach to capacitate young people with the necessary skills and abilities needed to kind of survive in the job market. But we believe in our company that with just the basic and the, the, the willingness to learn, the basic writing and reading skills, and the willingness to learn. That is all that is required for our courses. So first of all, we tell our students that, hey man, you do not have to have that extra qualification. Say for instance, you do not even have to have a WAS result for us to kind of admit into our courses. All you need to have is the, the, the readiness to learn and then you should be committed and then you, you should put all effort to learning and you get the, the, the necessary um, um, kind of either a laptop or the equipment that are needed to take the course. So this is what we tell them. You do not have to have that formal qualification for you to make it in life. All you need to do is to look within yourself. People have, have kind of taught themselves in engineering. We, we, have, we have people like Kelvin Doe. 
be with Atwe him as a sales force engineer. I listened to Mr. Mr. Uh, um, one of the Sahelians you, you interviewed recently uh, from from that same diversify game. I listened to him, Jeremiah uh, Toronka. These mm -hmm. are not guys. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah Toronka is not a guy that is into that kind of a huge engineering course or whatever. No, he looked within himself. He saw a, a societal problem that he believed he could solve. Then he, he didn't look outside. He looked within himself and provided a solution to the problem. So that is exactly what we tell our students that, hey, you do not need to look outside for, for, for solutions to problems. Just look within yourself. And when you do that, you are set to solve any problem or challenge you may face or your society may face. Where does that ambition and confidence come from? Because, I, and I'm going to tell you a story. You know, you, you, you mentioned a, a great guest we had, but my time in Sierra Leone, the second day I'm in the country, I go to AYV and I already had a relationship with like Antonia and there was, you know, other people I was reaching out to, but I'm trying to get a ride. I almost take the, you know, the, the bike. There was no KK around even. I almost took the bike. Antonio's like, let me see if I can get you. Usually there's cars up here. And I said, what about that beautiful Mercedes? Is that yours? She's like, no, no. But let me see if Fabine will give you a ride. I said, okay. The woman gives me a ride. I told her we're going to be friends after the ride she gave me because of the conversation and the, the, the shared interest. But the mindset that she had and the mindset that you have is so much different than the mindset of majority of young people you referred to. That mindset, where did that come from? What teacher, what parent told you, you can do whatever you wanna do while you're in the hills going to school at Forbay, you know, in the, high, the highest of hills, folks, a beautiful view, right? We, we pay a lot of money to go to schools like that in the States, just to get that view. Who put instilled that into you to make you feel like I can do anything in the world and I'll show you? I tell you for sure, Caleb, my, my, my dad is one of the, the most fearless men I've ever met in my entire life. Um, I could still remember, I'll just use some stories to kind of answer this particular question. When we were in junior secondary school, most times when there are holidays, we'll just go to them in the village and try to help with some uh, domestic agricultural work so that we could kind of get fees for our next uh, academic session. So most times when we are there, it would always tell us, you see what we are doing here in a farm? This is my job. Your own job is to go out there and get almost anything you want in this world. I am only here to tell you that whatever you want to become, you can become. Whatever you want to achieve, you can achieve. If only you put yourself to it. If only you commit yourself 100% to what you are doing. It would always tell me that do not have many interests, but for whatever thing you find yourself interested in, do it to the best of your ability. Do not angle off. Do not flow with the population or with the crowd. Ensure that whatever you find yourself doing, do it to the best of your ability. And this is exactly what gives me confidence in whatever I'm, I have chosen to do. And uh, I hate being a mediocre. When I say I'm doing this, I commit myself to it, and I don't like failure. So at the end of the day, because of that, I build that self-confidence because I know there is no turning back. No sooner I say I'm doing this, there's no turning back. So all I have to do is win. So at the end of the day, <laughs> There is a self-motivation. It's, it's like a drive inside me. It's like a force that pulls me. Every now and then, if you say you are doing this, Alfred, do it to the best of your ability. And I tell you for sure, I have been fortunate on this particular Leotech idea to, to, to kind of work with people that are, that are actually kind of thinking similarly to the way I'm thinking. They have the same drive as I have because if it were all my idea, all my effort and all my, my commitment, it wouldn't have reached to the point where you may have probably heard of it. So people like Alan San Quiete, who is a co-founder also of the same Leote, he, he has the same drive as I do. So this is how exactly I motivate myself. This is the source of 
my inspiration, my motivation, I mean, something that actually pushed me every now and then. Okay. Now, do you think um, from what you see of the youth in Sierra Leone, are most people not giving their all um, that you, that we're, you know, we're just talking about those people who aren't giving their all. Is it because they have a fear of failure or are they scared of the success? Cause people usually it's like one or the other. I don't want to start because I might fail or I don't want to start because if I become successful, I'm comfortable where I'm at right now. So I don't want to, you know, blow up and, and be the world's biggest influencer. I mean, I, I'm talking to people and I'm like, you're giving it for free to Instagram. Why not monetize what you're doing and create a system so you can be, you know, better financially? But what do you think it is of the youth that struggle with that in Sierra Leone? Yes, Caleb. Um, honestly, I think the first thing you said is one of the problems, the fear of Failure. I can tell you for sure, um, I picked one of the wise sayings from Mark Zuckerberg. He says that ideas don't come out perfectly formed. It, it, they, only, they only become clearer as you, you work on them. So all you have to do is to just get started. That saying from Mark Zuckerberg always kind of inspires me. So at the end of the day, we see Sierra Union youth when they find themselves, for example, in organizations where you have two or three people coming together to work on something. What they will do, they would angle off, flow with the, with the, with the face. I mean, they would, they, would, they, would, they would hang out and then they would wait. When success comes, they want to come and capitalize on it. But I can tell you for sure, when people are working hard to project a certain image or to, to achieve a certain goal, and then you are not there, when opportunity comes, they, they are not going to look at, I mean, they're not going to kind of, um, sideline those who've been working, and then they go there and just identify you who have not been working. So this is what has been affecting uh, some of the youth in Sierra Leone. When they find themselves in whatever organization or whatever, um, whether an establishment working with people, they hang um, around, and when success comes, they want to come and capitalize. This is just one. The fear of failure is another one, but actually, what I see as a problem also is the idea that Sahelian youths are very good at blaming others, blaming people. They blame their parents, they blame the government, they blame the system, they blame their institutions, but they will never blame themselves. So one of the things I have seen uh, that is actually a source of motivation or, or something that could land somebody into success is when you start blaming yourself for whatever failure you are encountering. So when you encounter a failure, you first blame yourself. Say, okay, there is, an, there, is, there is a certain responsibility or there is a role or there is a, a, a certain thing I should have done to avoid this. Then you find out what you would have done to avoid that failure. So by that, when something similar to that comes in the future, you know that you should first look within yourself before you blame others. So when you know that you're going to end up blaming yourself for your failure, you won't let yourself to fail because you know your, your blame is coming back on yourself. But I think um, that also is one of the problems that are actually kind of keeping Sierra Union youth lagging behind. The system could be a problem, but you have some, some problems that are outside your control, but you have some other problems that are within your control. The problem of the government, the problem of the system, the problem of our institutions, this is in the hands of our leaders. Let them control that. We may send voices, we may advocate, we may anticipate for change, but these are to some extent beyond the controls of Sierra Leonean youth. What is in the control of Sierra Leonean youth is what they can do about themselves. It's what they can do to improve themselves. You can go extra mile. You have youth in, uh, in our educational system. I mean, they will be, grumbling with the, 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 the way the curriculum is not up to date. But at the same time, they will not go out there and search for skills that could complement the curriculum. So at the end of the day, it becomes a problem that cannot be solved. So that is, that is what I think is affecting our youth here at Helen. 
okay so that we now that we have that that is not just a Sierra Leone problem it happens globally especially with our I'm going to focus on um, the black community uh, just because it's it's easy to do I could make it a human problem as well if I wanted to but I want to focus on Sierra Leone and the same problem that we're having there of blaming people same problems in Cameroon my wife is from Cameroon people want to blame the same president has been there but politicians and you so beautifully said it governments do what governments do our job is to create and do our fulfill our purpose um to get to that type of understanding you have some good people around you you mentioned your father with the negative I call them negative Nellies. Um, how do you block out the negative? Because all about Sierra Leone, when you hear in the news, when you're on the outside is negative. If it's about this, 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 you know, I don't even want to say the issues because I only want to show the beautiful. I only want to, I want to do what I see CNN does for America and for the UK. They just highlight the beautiful and they focus on that. So that's where I'm at. How do you, as an engineer, somebody who you, you can make, break, fix things, how do you keep a positive circle around yourself? And what are some rituals that other people maybe could follow, whether it's prayer, reading books weekly? What are some of the things that you're doing to keep you in such a high standard in your, in your mind? Yes, thank you so much, Caleb. Um, I must give a background. Um, one of the challenges we faced when we started off with a Leotech idea. Uh, we were in final year in engineering, and uh, the engineering course here in Sierra Leone is five years. So going towards final year, the course becomes so demanding. I mean, you have to give your time, your all to the course so that you are able to complete your, your, your thesis and so on, and some other uh, um, concluding projects that you have to do in, in kind of trying to satisfy your lecturers or your supervisors. One of the problems we had was the fact that the idea of our company was kind of deviating our attention from our coursework. And before we imagined, we started having some, some issues from my institution, myself and my co-founder, Alassane Kuyeti. So we had all of these negative thoughts, people coming around, you know you guys are yet in college, why are you just trying to mess up all what you've started? You started so uh, nicely, I mean, you are a prospect for first class, so why are you wasting all of that to just kind of establish a company? And, and after all, you can establish a company and focus on it after your graduation. So why now? Why not you just focus on the course for now and then after your graduation, you focus on your company? That was just one. People would come around, boo. You're not getting for it to talk about company. It's like, oh, pull money for invest. That is to say, you don't have something to eat on your own and then you are putting money on company. So where are you going to get something? That is just one. So all of these negative thoughts and came around from friends, from respectable people. But at the end of the day, what kept us going was the fact that we focused on our goal. We focused on our goal, the bigger picture, and we never listened to what the crowd was saying. So at the end of the day, we, 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 we saw the fact that if you focus on your goal, People may not see what you're seeing now. Some people will just see the most immediate uh, impact or the most immediate benefit or the most immediate success. But you as a visionary or you as an entrepreneur, you should be able to see yourself 10 years ahead or five years ahead, not just today or tomorrow. So uh, we, we, we saw mm -hmm. the fact that if we could just focus on what we are doing whilst we are simultaneously going through our calls, that was the right time, and we believe we could get uh, a momentum because we were yet in the university system, and we are trying to establish a company that is going to be interfacing with our, unit, our, our institutions. So that was the right time to establish a company, and yes, indeed, we did it. So as to what keeps me positive and uh, what keeps me focused on my goal and um, kind of 
neglect all the negative thoughts. I think um, I look more within than outside when I am looking for advice, when I am looking for solutions. I look within myself, not outside. Because the problem here is that you take your ideas to people, you discuss with them, it, you'll be shocked to get their response, the kind of response they'll give you, whether negative or positive. I tell you in Sierra Leone, more than 90% of the response you will get for a new idea you would want to start will be negative. So at the end of the day, there is no point. Focus on yourself, look within you, for the fact that you believe what you're thinking about is possible and you can achieve it. Just go in for it and just try to avoid the crowd. That is what helped us. I love it. I love it. And I know you're I know you're still young, but the book, when you get, you know, charged to write it, write it, write the book. Um, I, I can see a career or two of, uh, you know, public speaking for you, because even me with creating, we created a um, consulting and investment firm in Sierra Leone. All paperwork should be done by the um, end of this month, you know, to even try to find a taxi cab driver I talked about, it's a hassle. But to try to find a lawyer who won't charge you the JC price, when you started your company, this is a teachable moment, then I'm going to share mine. If you will, can you talk about how much did it cost you to start your business in Sierra Leone? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Caleb. Um, well, honestly, from what is advertised, because we, we are kind of establishing a company with an idea of making profits. So at the Corporate Affairs Commission, we were asked to pay for, for the registration and documentation. Uh, the cost was something around uh, 250,000 liters. I don't know if the price has changed for now, but that was the price by then. But then when okay. we went there, we were asked for some certain documents. We were asked to produce our M&A. We were asked to give some rights up about our company and so on and so forth. And uh, I am not legally minded. I'm not a legal practitioner. I am just an upcoming engineer. And my colleague also is not a legal practitioner. So trying to get a legal practitioner to kind of do this document for us, to write for us the the, the the M A and to go through all the legal proceedings just to get our company fully registered and a legitimate company here in Sierra Leone, it cost us up to something like um, four million liens. Okay, I'm so, gonna share a story. I'm gonna share a story. You say four million liens. You know there was a lawyer that tried to get eight million from me, and I said, "Ah, uh -uh. is this? Is this? Is this? Do you have a gun?" Am I still in America? You want you want to you want to rob me? And so I found somebody who around your price, um, you know, connected me. Uh, but the fact that if in, when you're trying to find a lawyer, your lawyer is already trying to um, get more money than is expected. Maybe they're charging him. Maybe he knows someone they're charging. Right. Maybe they're just that big of a firm. But the fact that that is such a. It's double the price and then some to set up a business. And we wonder why when we have all these JCs coming, especially the ones that look like me and you, why <laughs> things are, why that money isn't flowing? Because what's going to happen is if you have all these black Americans and Brits and people from France coming, they should be dropping their wallets once they get to the country to start a business, to employ locally. If not, you're no better than the Chinese who will can bring in their <laughs> own labor. You of know, course. this is this is me saying it. I got I, I got uh, nothing to lose. Trump told us so. And him and I share the same birthday. So I fully get it. I'm going to create a business and I'm going to hire people from Sierra Leone that are trustworthy, will, will do what they say and show people it can be done in the consulting and investing. And then we can go, you know, venture on to other companies and other things but there's a certain type of my wife coined it as learned helplessness 
in Africa, especially in West Africa, where people feel it's the JCs or the Chinese, someone else is going to help you and just give you money. So when you tell someone, give me a business plan, they say, eh, a business, what do Yes, a business plan. You can't just tell me, oh, I have this great idea and I can't read it. That's not how business works in this, you know, technology, modern day, whatever you want to call. I want to know from you, because you're still in school about to graduate. You haven't even peaked yet. What is a community give back besides the, your company that you've talked about? And, you know, I know it's, um, it's more than a company. It is you. But what is something you haven't said or something you want to do in the future that is strictly for the community? We call it a community give back diversified game. Okay, um, thank you so much, Caleb. Um, honestly, as an engineer, I believe because I am that technology driven person and I so much believe in innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, before I even state out what I am intending to do as an engineer and trying to interface entrepreneurship with innovation. There is a big problem here. There is a steel wall between entrepreneurship and innovation. You see, people invent here in Sierra Leone. And if you are that familiar person on the social media and so, you will see a lot of inventions coming out from Sierra Leone. But I tell you for sure, Kellen, none of these inventions are presently in the local market. Most of them are just on the desktop as decorations. So there is a need to bridge a gap between innovation and entrepreneurship. And that is exactly what I am interested in coming up as, an, as, a, as a young engineer. On graduating, I am surely going to be looking within my community for problems such as clean cooking, plastic recycling, and see how we, we can develop inventions, innovative ideas on how we can go after these problems and try to bring local content solutions to them. I mean, solutions that can be marketed, not solutions that can just be, be piled in the lab there for decorations or for advertisement and so. So we have a team, even outside the Lute company, we, we, we have people in the diaspora, we have uh, Mr. Abdul Karim Bari is one of my mentors. He's also an engineer, he's in Boston. Um, he's also a Sierra Leonean. So we are seeing to how we can work with these people so that we get resources and go after these problems and provide solutions to them. And the solutions we are providing are solutions that Sierra Leoneans can afford. As to what Leotech as a company and what I represent here right now as I see it, is giving back to our communities. Recently, um, I mean, a few months ago, um, our engineering society in Fabi College called me to, to deliver a public lecture on the relevance of some of the courses we offer at Leotech. So I was there, I offered a public lecture, and one of the problems I saw was the fact that most Sierra Leonean youth are not interested that much into technology. So the few, that we are committed to attending that public lecture, we gave them scholarship to, 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 our, to our Lutet programs. None of them paid. And the start of our quote for training in early December, they were there and they are now under the training. Also, we, 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 we look at the fact that girls are not that much interested when it comes to innovation, entrepreneurship and technology as a whole. I don't know if they, 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 are, they, they, they are scared of technology or they think it is too demanding on them, or they think it is too difficult to be a technology magician or whatever. Uh, but I believe, or I am seeing the fact that they are not that kind of participating in things relating to technology. So what we did was to give scholarship to all female students that are opting to, to kind of offer our courses. And presently, that has increased the number of um, female participants I mean, female trainees in, in our Lutech courses for up to 25%. So I say to you, we are giving back as a company and individually myself, I've not done much, but I've not even started yet. But by the grace of God, I am, I am, I am, I am positive that indeed on graduating, I will be set to give back to my community as much as possible. 
In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen to that. Uh, and especially yeah. with, with women, women being the now being the future, um, great things happening. There were so many women, they came, they, they, you know, interviewed and people were like, is that all you want? And I've got that in Sierra Leone. I've got that in Cameroon. I've got that in Kenya, South Africa. Like, you know, is that all you want? I'm like, yeah, what else is there? We came for an interview, but I, the, 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 the mindset that you think that somebody would want something else at a, at a business meeting, you know, especially an old pot like myself, a chief like myself, I, I, there's nothing, there's nothing else but the story. So I, you know, I, I, women in front of my company, put them in the front. I, I can be an afterthought. You see the women, cause I have daughters too. And so I want them to, you know, have a company where they can, they can run and they can do what they need to do. I'm not going to drag this interview on folks. I just want to give you guys a taste of some of the great talent in Sierra Leone. For those of you who want to invest in Sierra Leone, the links will be in the description for Alfred and his company. There's also, we have, um, you know, CPR firm, my company and the Diallo company for Sierra Leone. If you guys want to tap in and say, look, we want to like have you handhold, hold our hand to show us the different investments. We don't know all the investments in Sierra Leone, but we'll show you what we do know and the people that we think we can trust. I'm not doing mines and diamonds right now for all of you. I don't know anything about that. So I got to go find experts who do, who have a proven track record. And I have a couple people I know, but they need to be vetted even more because they're Americans doing mining in Africa. So I'm always a little skeptical about that because people lose their whole fortune. I thank you, Alfred, for coming on. Um, tell the people if they do want to contact you, is it email? Is it WhatsApp? Is it LinkedIn? The best way to contact you. Yes. Um, well, I am on uh, almost all social media platforms. To contact me, I may give out my, my WhatsApp number, plus 232-7999-2307. Again, plus 232-7999-2307. On email, mbayoalfair at gmail.com. It spells M-B-A-Y-O-H-A-L-F-A-I-A-H at gmail.com. On LinkedIn, I am just Alfred Bayo. You can search for me on LinkedIn. Or you can search for a company on LinkedIn, um, Leotech, Sierra Leone, just S-L-L-T-D, Leotech, S-L-L-T-D. On Facebook, just Leotech. Our website, www.leotechsl.com. Or let me spell it out, www.leotech sl.com um, i think these are enough contact points you can use to just get onto me or onto view tech or at any time you guys have gotten the game it was a beautiful beautiful just the taste we're just getting you a taste of what needs to be done because alfred and i were even talking about before the interview officially started you know uh will we do it in creole well, you know i say pigeon is pigeon but business has to be done however those you want to do business with so if we have to do it in creole we do it in creole have to do it in mandarin chinese to make the business i say that because i want you guys to really think if all you want to do is speak creole just the same way in America, if some of you only want to speak Ebonics, which is Creole, it's Pigeon, right? That's what, it, it, it's just a remix. Um, you're not going to be able to do business in certain areas that don't speak that language. And if the majority of people don't speak English, I can't speak English. The majority of people don't speak French, I can't speak French. Same thing with Pigeon. So make sure you guys are speaking the language you want to do business in and with for investors. You have been blessed by the game. Again, we thank our new partners, AYV Radio, iHeart Radio, always, Spotify, always, and Podbean and everywhere else that you guys can hear us. We're going to take the conversation off air where it usually is the best conversation, but you guys have gotten the game. Make sure you share this with somebody. It will change their life. Be blessed. Hi, everyone. Have you ever been curious about visiting Africa? 
Which African country were you interested in? Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, South Africa, Ethiopia. Which country are you interested in? My good friend, Kellen Cash Coleman, came up with a course called My First Trip to Africa that'll guide you through this process. It's only $20, and in this course, you'll learn about passports, visas, vaccinations that you need before you go there, as well as a budget, uh, how much the trip is gonna cost. He also talks about what you should pack, uh, what you should take with you, how you should travel on a budget. Did you know that 100 US dollars is worth a 1,000 South African rand and over 10,000 Kenyan shillings? So imagine what you can do with a hundred dollars back home. I say back home because I'm from Sudan, I'm African, I already know how it's like. I know that, you know, when you convert Canadian and American money, it goes a long way when you're traveling across Africa. So if you're curious, um, if, if Africa is a place that you've always wanted to go, always want to move there, Kellen Cash is the person to ask. Check out the course, there's a little preview you can listen to um, before you actually purchase it. If you're interested in this course, visit www.diversifiedgame.com. Don't miss out. Game.